the Center for Schools and Communities. Did yes. I say it right? Yes, you did. <laughs> Celeste <laughs> Overton Morris. Yes. And we're so glad to have you on the show. I've known you for years yes. and just glad to see your progression up and all the great things that you do in community and especially with this organization that you're uh, representing today. Oh, you, thank you both you, for having yeah, me. Yeah. When you first went to the Center for Schools and Communities, what was your title? What did you go in at? I was actually a Safe Schools Coordinator. Okay. It was uh, right after Columbine, mm -hmm. and the state had invested almost $30 million in school safety. Wow. And I was one of those folks out on the ground making sure that schools had the information and resources they needed to um, make sure that students were safe. And now here you yeah. are, moved up to director. Yes. And also in that capacity, with the bully program come out of that as well? Yes. Was, yes. Yes. Oh, um, yes. We at the center house the Center for Safe Schools mm -hmm. and uh, that work includes all safety, school safety and violence prevention work, okay. which includes bullying prevention and the OVAS program. Mm -hmm. Actually, we house the largest known OVAS bullying prevention network mm -hmm. in the country that we know yeah, of. That's great stuff. So I know a lot of people don't know all of what you do, uh, what the Center for Schools and Communities do. So just give us a back, uh, you know, an overview of the, of the kind of work you are. Uh, sure, mm -hmm. sure. The center is a division of uh, the Central Susquehanna Intermediate Unit. It's mm -hmm. IU-16, actually located up in Milton, P Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. uh, we have an office here in Camp Hill, Pennsylvania. And our work really focuses on um, intervention and prevention initiatives. Okay. Um, some are funded by uh, the state department, some are pu public uh, funds from other agencies, and some are private funds from foundations. And what we really do is really help uh, school districts, community-based organizations, and those uh, agencies working with children, youth, and families to improve the services directed at those children, youth, and families. Fantastic. Right. This is good. And how long has the agency been around, by the way? Mm -hmm. uh, we've been around since 1988, so oh. we'll be celebrating our 30th year mm -hmm. next year, and we're really excited about uh, having an open house and doing some activities around that for uh, mm -hmm. agencies in the state to get to know us better. People, we were joking before we came on uh, the air about the, the two agencies that have a similar title, you know. Right, so well, we course, won't talk about we that won't talk about the other agencies. <laughs> <But we're laughs> they do good work. They right. do great work, yes, yes. indeed. But, yeah. but people would sometimes tend to get it mixed up. And so we want to be very clear, you are the Center for Schools and Communities. Right. And you're located in, is it Des Moines? And Camp Hill, Pennsylvania. Camp Hill, Pennsylvania. Right okay. off of our Fort Worth Road. Good, yes. good, good. But okay. can I ask, going back mm -hmm. history-wise, was there any sort of evolution with that with cities and schools? Remember cities and schools back in the 80s? Yes. That so communities and schools is, is um, part of the, um, we actually, they're one of our partners and okay. we've worked with them in several um, aspects. One in statewide work mm -hmm. as the Department of Education looks mm -hmm. at community schools mm -hmm. okay. and also as a partner and some uh, training and professional development that we provide to educators mm -hmm. around how communities can support schools and students mm -hmm. and families. Mm -hmm. Fantastic, mm -hmm. good stuff. Okay. Now, you know, um, you're currently in the doctoral program. Correct. Because you love education. Because I love education. <laughs> <laughs> Lifelong learner. Lifelong learner. learner. And that's encouraged, though, mm -hmm. right? That's yes. the kind of work that you are, you know, trying to do. Mm -hmm. When you look at uh, what's happening, uh, you know, around the country, literally, uh, when you start talking about charter schools, private schools, all these different educational entities are springing up. What's your take on that? And how can we best, as a community, utilize all of the services that are out there? I'm a big proponent and an advocate for public schooling. But I realize that all these other schools are here, and so I'm not trying to knock them down. But, you know, are, are we on the right track, or what's going on here? Just putting you on the spot. Yeah, <laughs> putting you on the spot, no yeah. problem. Um, so I'm a big advocate of public schools, too. Mm -hmm. Most of the work we do are with public schools in Pennsylvania, okay. including charter schools, which mm -hmm. are, are two public schools. True. Mm -hmm. I think for, um, for me, what's important is leadership. Okay. Um, at all levels, whether it's at the student level, parent mm -hmm. level, mm -hmm. community level, and at the administrative level right. in the districts, mm -hmm. um, and or at the superintendent level. Mm -hmm. I think um, one of the things that we are looking at and are finding and research is that, mm -hmm. you know, for this generation who are digital natives, mm -hmm. we're digital immigrants, mm -hmm. How do we begin to mm -hmm. transform our education system in a way that speaks to the young people it's supposed to teach? Right. So mm -hmm. when you're thinking about uh, Facebook and mm -hmm. Instagram and iTunes mm -hmm. and the mass customization mm -hmm. of 
almost every other thing in their lives yeah. other than education. Yeah. So how do we really begin to build systems that yeah. allow young people to enter wherever they are right. and mm -hmm. get through um, the learning objectives that they need to meet certain requirements mm -hmm. and move on or stay back until they get it. And uh, so I think as we begin to build systems like that, we'll see better outcomes for young people. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. I like you say there, uh, when you say natives and we're immigrants. Yes, <laughs> yes. Is that what I am? Because I'm still <laughs> way out there. Yes. I mean, what do you do with, uh, you know, yeah. we have, I have a two-year-old nephew, great nephew, who knows the passcode to open his mom's iPhone. Yeah. So when that child enters kindergarten, mm -hmm. how do you teach a child yes. like that right. without mm -hmm. um, you know, kind of breaking their spirit yeah. by saying you have to sit at a desk and be still and, mm -hmm. and listen to the teacher. So mm -hmm. looking for those more kind of um, project-based learning mm -hmm. that um, incorporate team kind of, we know social skills sure. are mm -hmm. greatly, um, are a good, a great challenge for young people, mm -hmm. um, talking eye to eye like we are, mm -hmm. and um, not texting very important questions, yeah, picking yeah. up the phone right. sometime and talking to people. So mm -hmm. um, how do we build those skills in young people as well? Sure. Now, sure. now you're originally from this area. Yes. Okay. And your mom, okay, uh, who I understand was an icon, like basically, <laughs> mm -hmm. and all the work, and Nate talks about oh, her yeah. so mm -hmm. lovingly all the time. Mm -hmm. So your mom is? My mom is Joanne Robinson Overton, mm -hmm. definitely a community organizer okay. and advocate, Absolutely. one of the people mm -hmm. whom I um, take my passion for education mm -hmm. um, and um, the community and really um, wanting uh, folks to be able to reach their maximum potential. Absolutely. Yeah. Is she a nurse? She was a, a registered yes. nurse by trade, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, a healer mm -hmm. uh, by, um, <laughs> uh, in other places, yeah. in advocacy, mm -hmm. definitely. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I always joke my earliest memory is mm -hmm. being um, with her and my father at a golf rally in Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. um, uh, fighting against apartheid. So mm -hmm. I grew up. Uh -huh. um, knowing how important the global mm -hmm. world is and how it impacts um, different communities. So mm -hmm. I carry that with me. Yeah, and your husband is? My husband is Royce Morris. He's a partner in a law firm of Goldberg Katzman and mm -hmm. currently right. um, running for uh, Dauphin County judge. And um, mm -hmm. we're, I'm very, very proud of the work that mm -hmm. he's done over his 25 year career. And, mm -hmm. um, really uh, being speaking it into existence That's right. That's right. Um, in November. Yes. I call him and Judge Morris already. So. Yes, there you go. <laughs> well, I don't quite call him that. But <laughs> <laughs> not, yet, not, yet. Yeah. not yeah. until he has to call me okay. doctor. Right. Right. How about that? Fair, fair game, right? That's okay. Any children? No, it's not children. We have two sons. Mm -hmm. uh, Ian is our oldest, and he lives in New York City in the oh. Bronx okay. um, with his fiance, and they. Uh, he works for Amazon. He's That's a graduate cool. of Wharton Business School Ooh. and has been able to Ooh. parlay that into uh, some corporate work at Amazon. Oh, yeah. So we're Good very idea. proud of him. Mm -hmm. yes. Our youngest son, Christian, actually just received word this week that mm -hmm. he'll be working for let me get it, the Pennsylvania Legislative Bureau, Reference Bureau mm -hmm. for the state. So what he'll be doing is working with uh, legislative staff to set up bill, new bills mm -hmm. um, and do some research and make sure that they have the information they need as oh, they yeah. design new bills. Such a learned yeah. family and a legacy yeah. and all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, he's yeah. anticipating going uh, back to law school okay. next year. So we're, we're very right. proud of both of them. Um, That's great. Yeah, it's been blessed. Fantastic, Very fantastic. Mm -hmm. And then you've been blessed with becoming new director of an that's agency that's doing tremendous work in our community. And so um, how big is your agency? How many staff members are we mm -hmm. talking and all that good stuff? Right. So we have about 60 staff, mm -hmm. um, and they are focused on a variety of areas mm -hmm. of uh, expertise and knowledge. Okay. Community and family engagement is a big part of the work we do. Right. Um, we are the statewide office for parents as teachers mm -hmm. program. Oh. And so um, that's a home visiting program that is in many communities mm -hmm. um, that provides assistance to parents and how to and helping them to parent their mm -hmm. children for um, so that they can have a good educational experience. Mm -hmm. um, we also have, again, the Center for School, uh, Safe Schools, mm -hmm. um, which focuses on the bullying prevention. Mm -hmm. uh, we started a new center, which I'm very excited about, the mm -hmm. Center for Promotion 
of social and emotional learning. So we wow. call it CIPSL. I like that. So, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So there's been recent legislation from the federal government really mm -hmm. um, asking schools to focus on social and emotional learning, understanding mm -hmm. that especially for some of our most at-risk um, yeah. students who have suffered trauma mm -hmm. um, and continue to suffer trauma mm -hmm. um, in their, because they um, live in impoverished areas mm -hmm. where there might be violence or um, because of things that are going on in their home. So yeah. how do you really mm -hmm. um, speak to the whole child mm -hmm. in a way okay. that mm -hmm. they can learn? Yeah. And so, um, you know, very, very excited about that Fantastic. work. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. You know, we've done a lot of work with uh, fathers. And in mm -hmm. fact, I work through uh, Hamilton Health Center. They have a uh, Fathers Together program. Mm -hmm. And uh, also we do a lot of work with uh, Pittsburgh University's uh, Child Welfare Training okay. Resource Center. And we do uh, a lot of work around uh, parents and uh, fathers in particular. And so uh, that's an area that I hope that you'll, you know, maybe pay some attention to because without the father in the home, there's some serious consequences that are related to a child's uh, development, both social, emotional, as the well as uh, academic. Right. Yeah. Right. So, um, you know, just think about it. Yeah, okay, so we're yeah and mm -hmm. actually through our, um, mm -hmm. one of the initiatives we work with is the Pregnant and Parenting Team Program. Oh, okay. And okay. so there are 29 sites throughout Pennsylvania that mm -hmm. have these mm -hmm. um, programs inside mm -hmm. schools that mm -hmm. um, really provide support to not only the mother, right. yeah. but also to the father. Yes. So um, there's a fatherhood mm -hmm. initiative mm -hmm. in which we really help fathers to understand what their rights are, what the responsibilities mm -hmm. are. Okay. Um, you know, the age of just the mom, being the primary mm -hmm. caregiver right. mm -hmm. is not always true. So that right. we have fathers who are primary caregivers right. and mm -hmm. wanting to ensure that they have the resources that they need mm -hmm. to be successful with their children is very, very important. I'd like to sit with you and talk a little bit about those programs and see how we can, you know, maybe partner a Absolutely. little bit. We have a meeting once a month uh, over at the, I always mess up the name, but it's the uh, Mount, uh, what is it called? The Mountain oh, Blue, Restaurant. Oh, Blue, Blue Mountain oh. Restaurant. Okay. Yeah, off of uh, Progress Avenue. Let, and with, yeah, in yeah, uh, yeah, Lingle Sound. Like Road. And so we try to get um, programs in our area mm -hmm. to come together and just have a breakfast and, and talk and share. And we've had very good success mm -hmm. with it. Uh, but I'd like to talk to you more about some of the things that are going on. Yeah, yeah because um, we have the Fathering and Me program with a guy mm -hmm. named Justin. Uh, Oh, well, Justin, I'm sorry about that, but we even had him on the show here, but Justin's <laughs> doing a great job. And he's specifically targeting uh, fathers who are involved in unintentional pregnancies, you know, and how mm -hmm. all the dimensions that that deals with. So a lot of work we yeah, can do together. Yeah, yeah so. It's, I mean, mm -hmm. a complex issue, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and it, it touches um, various aspects of not only family life, but community sure. engagement and how our communities look every day to the people that mm -hmm. um, live in them. Yeah. And not to put you on the spot, but I asked the question anyhow. No problem. No problem. <laughs> but you think about the national conversations today, especially with the new administration. Back in the day, we used to talk about mm -hmm. No Child Left Behind. Mm -hmm. And I don't understand that's being replaced with another legislation. ESSA. What's, what's it? It's called ESSA, Every Student Succeeds Act. There you go. There yes. you go. Mm -hmm. So uh, c contrast the two in your mind. What do you think? Uh, is it a move forward, backwards? What are the pitfalls? What are the good parts about it? Yeah, I think it's um, it's a shift, okay. um, and you know, time will tell whether it's it's a yeah. good one or a bad yeah. one. Mm -hmm. I think what it allows is um, states to have more flexibility mm -hmm. in how they assess students. So mm -hmm. the um, test mandates that we've seen mm -hmm. um, through NCLB, I think. Um, will be l lessened um, and mm -hmm. so again this piece around social and emotional learning mm -hmm. parent engagement are all parts of ESSA okay. and so districts will be asked to make sure mm -hmm. that as part of their comprehensive plans those mm -hmm. things are included so I do think there are some great um, advances that can be made okay. if schools are resourced with the tools and dollars mm -hmm. to um, actually um, be able to do some of the things outlined so let me ask you, in your new role and position, what do you see long-term vision as to how this can truly embrace and really be available for the community, for the whole family, mm -hmm. and moving them to more successful opportunities and ways? 
Right. Mm -hmm. So our, our mission really is to empower the organizations that serve children, youth, and families. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes, you know, in public service, we mm -hmm. find that the turnover rate mm -hmm. for staff is high. Mm -hmm. um, they may not necessarily be trained mm -hmm. um, the way they need to in order to meet the needs of the constituents that they serve. So our role is really to come in alongside of those agencies okay. and make sure that they have high quality professional development opportunities, that there's coaching available to them, mm -hmm. that there are resources and um, research based mm -hmm. um, information that they can use to better serve their clients. Mm -hmm. um, we've seen, um, you know, especially around issues around equity and access mm -hmm. and education. We know there was a new study released uh, saying that 82% of all school teachers are white and female, yes. and yet we're um, in our schools, we're seeing an increase in majority minority mm -hmm. yes. populations. And so, how do we as an organization come alongside school districts and teachers mm -hmm. and help them understand the cultural relevance mm -hmm. um, of the students in their classrooms and use yeah. that mm -hmm. as an advantage in the classroom instead of a disadvantage? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, when I first heard that statistic, uh, it just blew me away. Yes. I said, that can't be true. Mm -hmm. It is true. 82 percent can you imagine you know and so the, it also begs the question why so many of us are not going into education Correct. or are we being locked out of it i, I wonder what the mm -hmm. you know what the deal is yeah so maybe well i think it's too. hard to see mm -hmm. you know to think about being what you don't see That's right true. so it's kind of a self-fulfilling mm -hmm. prophecy in some ways mm -hmm. i also think you know there was a time when we encouraged our young people to be teachers yes. yeah, they and um, I don't mm -hmm. think that the teaching profession is as well respected as it should be right. or once mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. so um, I think once young people can understand the importance mm -hmm. of their gift yeah. to um, education and being in a classroom mm -hmm. teaching children that look like them and mm -hmm. come from backgrounds like them yeah. um, and how important that can be mm -hmm. then we can increase that number it was a time when they used to have the incentive scholarships, whatever you want to call them. Mm -hmm. So if I went to college and I majored in education and then I worked in the field for five years or something like that, there would be so much forgiveness in terms of my loans and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I wonder if those programs still exist. They do. Okay. Um, the public service loan forgiveness program mm -hmm. still exists. Mm -hmm. I believe um, there's the uh, Teach America mm -hmm. program yeah. mm -hmm. that still exists. The problem, I think, is even with those programs, mm -hmm. um, having uh, pre-service teachers prepared to come into urban or rural environments where they may not mm -hmm. have necessarily developed the skills and expertise to teach mm -hmm. and um, and classrooms where behavior management mm -hmm. may be an issue or the issues around poverty so mm -hmm. how do you teach a child who doesn't have someone at home to do their homework with mm -hmm. or who, who may be coming mm -hmm. to school hungry or with the same clothes on or from a shelter yeah. and so um, our pre-service teachers if they're not prepared um, for those kinds of mm -hmm. students in their classrooms often leave mm -hmm. um, after the first or second year sure and that mm -hmm. impacts the stability of the school system mm -hmm. um, and impacts overall academic achievement for those schools. Mm -hmm. you you, now you have also annually a conference, mm -hmm. and you have one coming up this spring. Yes. And what is the major theme for this conference? Well, actually, we probably train about 10,000 people mm -hmm. a year, All right. um, either through online um, webinars, face-to-face mm -hmm. um, -face trainings, and uh, large conferences. Yes. So um, this year we have several conferences. Um, one is going to be our social and emotional learning conference, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that will be in May. Um, we will be doing some uh, regional trainings throughout the state around school safety mm -hmm. issues. Mm -hmm. As you know, there's some legislation um, currently sitting um, in the, uh, I believe it's in the House, uh, on whether or not uh, teachers will be able to bring guns to school. Right, right. And so really thinking critically about mm -hmm. what kind of policies and procedures need to be in place if that in, uh, legislation is in yeah. fact passed. Wow. So mm -hmm. we have multiple trainings. I encourage people to visit our website mm -hmm. and um, take a look. And most mm -hmm. of our um, conferences are free. Mm -hmm. um, some are of minimal fees. Mm -hmm. uh, but. Um, great. We always try to bring in high quality speakers, yeah, you, yeah. um, mm -hmm. you know, who um, bring some diverse um, thought processes mm -hmm. and uh, 
and we're, we're really excited about the work we are able to do. I've, over the years, I've been able to attend a number of your conferences, and uh, they're just excellent, you know, absolutely mm -hmm. excellent. I want to take a quick, uh, you know, detour here. Pat, mm -hmm. if you would talk real quickly about the Holistic Health Wellness Center that's coming up, I can hold that up for you. Yeah, um, in October, sometime by the latter part of October, Life Esteem is really proud to announce that uh, we'll be opening up a Holistic Health Wellness Center, uh, which we call our Path to Wholeness where we're going to have programs, uh, you know, activities, uh, practices to include everything from meditation, mindfulness, which our guest says that they do some <laughs> of those type of services. Yes. And so we'll be calling and on her, creative writing, journaling, uh, looking at massage therapy, uh, Reiki, Pilates, yoga, uh, drumming circles, uh, mm -hmm. Therapeutic all kinds writing, of yeah, therapeutic kind writing, of yeah. and mm -hmm. just looking at the multiple pathways that people can utilize to make themselves whole. And I call it the healthy living circle, which embraces spiritual, mental, emotional, and spiritual needs. Mm -hmm. Physical so, as well. Physical as well. Mm -hmm. So please look out for that. Any information, anybody wants to be a part and participate, they can get in touch with me at 717-608-2302. And another program coming up on October the 15th at the State Museum of Pennsylvania is called the Multicultural Storytelling Festival. It's absolutely free to the public. It's going to be a lot of fun. We have uh, all kinds of activities going on. But the Storytelling Festival is designed for you to come in and tell a part of your story. So each person that signs up will get 10 minutes to tell a part of their story. We're going to intentionally go out and get certain people like Celeste Overton Morrison. <laughs> and that's her to come in. Awesome. <laughs> It'll be lovely to have her, yes. have your mother as well, to come in and it, it, the, the storytelling sharing is just an incredible day. Mm -hmm. We've done it a number of years now, and it's just getting bigger and it bigger. Is. So if you'd like to sign up, you can always give me a call at uh, area code 717-608-2312. Again, that's 608-2312. And it's free, it's fun, and you'll have a great time. October the 15th at the State Museum. So, mm -hmm. semester, awesome. yeah, so we just wanted to mention that. But uh, back to what you're doing. Uh, so, persons who want to get in touch with your office, who is the average consumer, let's say the average person watching this program, why would they contact your office? What kind of s services would they be looking for? So, the average consumer, first of all, would be a community based organization or a school district or mm -hmm. a single school themselves. And they would be contacting us because they may want uh, professional development mm -hmm. or some coaching or some consulting for um, their district or agency around, mm -hmm. um, you know, as I said, parent engagement, school safety, mm -hmm. social and emotional learning. Um, mm -hmm. We even have um, folks who are, um, uh, have expert knowledge in uh, English as second language students, okay. mm -hmm. migrant education, mm -hmm. um, and out of school time is a big part of our work. We mm -hmm. understand how important all learning um, places and spaces are for kids mm -hmm. and especially for um, young people of color and who come from impoverished backgrounds out of school time whether that's summer yeah. saturday or mm -hmm. directly after school can provide those um, tactile learning opportunities mm -hmm. that make what they had in the classroom earlier that day right. come to life Absolutely. so we really um, you know are a huge promoter of out of school time and homelessness I know affects a lot of people in terms of uh, you know school I mean mm -hmm. there's a lot of kids who you know like the Harrisburg district at one point mm -hmm. I don't know what the statistics mm -hmm. are now uh, had identified like 350 to 400 young people that were mm -hmm. actually considered homeless at the time mm -hmm. you know but they were still going to school you wouldn't know that they were right. I mean you know because they were living in the shelters or you know couch surfing whatever mm -hmm. do you touch on any of that in terms of education yes mm -hmm. one of our initiatives um, we call it Ek yeah and it's about um, children experiencing um, homelessness mm -hmm. and so we um, we we really begin to change the terminology instead of calling the student homeless saying that what they are experiencing yeah. is homelessness I like that. and mm -hmm. um, recognizing the supports that they need so all over the state mm -hmm. there are uh, regional coordinators who work with homeless liaisons mm -hmm. which each school has to have okay. or each district has to have in order to support um, uh, young people experiencing homelessness and to know that it's not just about someone um, you know maybe mm -hmm. sleeping under um, a bridge or on a park bench mm -hmm. or at a shelter there you know when a student is doubled up mm -hmm. what we call doubled up and you know staying on a uh, mm -hmm. friend's couch yeah, right, yeah. or something that mm -hmm. that's experiencing homeless whenever there's not a stable living environment yeah, sure, right sure. and we've seen mm -hmm. you know young people um, be able to 
you know, overcome some of those challenges mm -hmm. and obstacles because they've had support at the at their schools. Yeah. And so yeah. it's very, very important that schools pay attention to that. Fantastic. And to be sure now, you are, um, your service area is the entire state or is it we, your it, statewide agency? We're a statewide agency. Wow. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. actually, um, just last week, um, becoming um, international, we have two mm. staff who are slated to go to Chile. Oh. Um, to do okay. some work um, with mm. uh, one of our programs that we um, oversee, I Can Problem Solve and Social Emotional Learning. Mm. So um, we're very excited about wow. that work mm -hmm. and um, I'm a little sad that I won't get to go to <laughs> Chile. <laughs> um, and, and we actually just had another staff um, uh, because we do a lot of work yeah. with the um, former Mid-Atlantic mm. Equity Center. Mm. Um, mm. And I think now they're the Center for Equity. Um, okay. in St. Thomas, Virgin Islands. Oh, so um, okay. we are the point person in um, Pennsylvania um, through Kentucky and the Virgin Islands for mm -hmm. some technical assistance in that area. Yeah. So we're That's excited great. about that work. You know, with the uh, whole emphasis on immigration, mm -hmm. re reduction and restrictions mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff, the fact of the matter is America is a melting pot for the entire world. And so I think it makes um, the whole educational process, mm -hmm. right? A lot more dynamic and, and, and difficult because you never know who's coming exactly. and where they're gonna show up because communities change quickly, don't they? Yes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes, and what we really advocate is um, for you know communities to embrace that diversity. Right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what would it look like if you took a Spanish speaker mm -hmm. and um, allow them to help teach the English speaker Spanish and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So there is some of that going on yeah. um, in our schools and we just encourage more of that kind of thing to happen. Well, we're going to quickly run out of time. So once again, give people your uh, you know contact information if they're interested in working with you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, we're at the Center for Schools and Communities and our uh, website address is www.center-school.org and um, if you need to reach us by phone. The area code is 717-763-1661. And I highly more than happy to help you. I'm sorry. And I highly encourage you to uh, follow up with that because the conferences are fantastic. They're mm -hmm. first rate. You learn so much and then you meet so many dynamic people from across the state. Right, the networking yeah. you know, opportunities the network are is yes, wonderful. Amazing. Yeah, yes. good, good, good. So whatever you do, uh, you know, check out the Center for Schools and Communities. If you never heard about them, mm -hmm. uh, you know, believe me, they are active in your school district or in your, yes. your your life in some way and so you know get involved again congratulations to Celeste yeah, thank you uh, for becoming the new executive director mm -hmm. there and uh, we know that you will support her and support your uh, entire family by simply getting involved and uh, making sure that we all stay informed there's a lot of stuff happening out there right yes, and we yes. can't stay on top of all of it but you know we have some experts who can thank you so much for watching this program it's called Life Esteem we come here on Channel 21 I want to thank Channel 21 WHP TV 21 here in the Harrisburg area serving Central Pennsylvania for all these years and we're so glad and proud to be a part of them. God bless you and hope to see you next time here on Life Esteem.